All right, people. Uh, this is Prof. Manganga once again, people, from Let There Be Light tutorial. So, yeah, in this video, people, like, uh, if you can check the last two videos that I've uploaded uh, on, on the tutorial, um, on, on Kachula specifically, uh, where I'm dealing with the domain. So, today, I'll be trying to explain it to you, uh, how you can use that information to apply it on real time uh, 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 or like on the on, on the real examination uh, examination questions people so i'm going to look at the four uh, uh, functions and then that's where we are going to 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 apply so i've, I've got all of them uh, the in their own variety i'm a function so at least it will help us to give you a right perspective on how you can you know find the range the domain and also to sketch the function so people let's just not waste time and just let us just go through it once we so people remember if you can check that we are given the first function here is what people is a parabola function and i believe that most of you people have what is called people like have, we have a background on how to, 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 to really sketch and to really analyze because that's what we do when we're finding a range of domain. We're analyzing the function, where does it exist, all of those things. So that's what we do. So I believe that all of us are have acquaintances, uh, like are, are, are having a knowledge, a little bit knowledge of how to really go about this. So uh, I don't know whether, I, let me just try maybe firstly sketching it or maybe let me sketch it after, but let me just firstly, uh, try and sketch it straight away people for you guys and then from there we're going to analyze it but first i don't want to really go straight i want us firstly see understand and how to find domain without sketching the function so definitely the, the domain part i'll definitely go straight on it before we can even draw because if we draw i've drawn the the the, the, the sketch then it will be easier for you and there are questions about you'll be given functions and then you'll never be asked to draw them you'll just be asked to find the domain and range so let's go through people. So uh, the first function is that the first function is given in this format. People, we can see it is equal to f of x, f of x is equal to x squared, is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 5. And then in this case, now you are asked to draw, you know, to find. The, the domain, the range, and also to draw the function. So I'll start with the domain because it's, it's very easy, people, and come with the range and then maybe draw it after us and draw it after we found this information. So let's go straight to it, people. So this is how you're going to approach this question. Remember, the first thing that we want to find is the, what is the domain of this function, people. We want to find the domain of this function. So this is how we're going to do it, people. Remember, the, the previous videos that I told you about. As long as you have a what? A polynomial function, people. So the, a parabola is a polynomial function, people. I believe, people, if you don't know what is a polynomial function, just please go back to the two previous videos that I've uploaded just to get an idea of what I'm talking about. So this is an application. So it's wise uh, 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 and it is preferable for me to watch the previous two videos so that you can understand what is going on here because I won't be going too deep here. So here, people, this is how you're going to find it. Remember, we know that this one, people, they are like this. Can you see that? They are like this. And then what happened is that these function people, they do what, people? They always exist they always exist everywhere in what in your in your in your x exists so the functions they're like this they keep on moving to the positive infinity on the right and they keep on going people to the what to the negative infinity to the left so this means the domain will be what x an element of what of real numbers the polynomial function, they're always like that. Polynomial function, they will always have the, the domain as x an element of real numbers. There will be no breaks whatsoever. 
in the in their x axis there will be no interval where they do not exist where people in the x axis so will they exist anywhere so this is it number two people they ask us to find what they also find us our uh, they ask us to find any a range so how do you find a range now okay a range remember people what is a range a range it as uh, tells us which we, we want to find where does the function exist along the y axis this is y this is x axis so domain deals with where the graph exists here and then uh, a range deals with where the graph exists along y axis so so to get a better perspective please watch the, the, the previous two videos people so this is how we're going to find the 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 the, the range of this one remember this one people has a turning point it is a maximum point or is a, a a minimum point so in this case since this is what the coefficient of x squared is positive because there's an in invisible one here since it is a positive one people it is a positive one so this means your graph has what has a minimum as a minimum turning point so we need to find that minimum turning point because below that turning point the graph does not exist but it only exists from that turning point moving upwards so this means we need to find firstly find what our turning point we need to find our uh, turning point so remember there are many ways to find a turning point people the first one you can use this this formula people from great uh, uh, from your high school years and then after finding your x this will represent your x the coordinate of the x turning point and you're going to take it and substitute it here and find your y because it is the y that we are interested on because range it's 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 where the graph turns are you with me we are interested on that so let's move on now this is uh, how are we going to do this can use this one as a first technique the other one people you can find what people you can find you want your first derivative and take your first derivative and equate it to zero and then solving that equation then you'll find the x coordinate of the turning point so uh, this is what we want this is what we want Uh, going to say going to find I'm going to use this one people because it's a little bit easier and uh, I also remember this is calculus so it's very important to really just try to whatever choice you you, you choose to follow try to you to use the rules that they are going to use uh, moving forward so this is a rule that you are definitely you are going to come across or use moving forward so hence it is the right thing to do so I'm going to find the first derivative of this using the power rule. So this one, people remember, is going to be 2x and then plus 2. So this is the first derivative of this function. So it's 2x plus 2. And then you take these people and equate it to 0. 2x plus 2 and equate it to what? To 0. And equate it to 0. And equate it to zero and then you solve people you solve for x and then if you go on your x people here and i believe it is go it is going to be what your negative one so remember people would please after watching these videos then close uh, the video and then just try to redo this example people so that you see that you followed and then moving forward we why we are not really looking for x but x is going to help us to find y and then that is the y that we are going to use to find our range are you with me so from here people this is what you're going to do 
take this value and substitute it where people to the original function. So this means you're going to find your what? You're going to find your what? Your f of negative one. So I mean, where you see x here, you're going to put your negative one. And then the value that you're going to get, people, is going to be plus five. It's going to be four. Are you with me? So this means now your turning point, your turning point has x as negative one and then has y as your four. So this means this now represents your what? Your minimum point. The lowest point of the graph. Since this is a positive function, people remember it's a smiling up. It's smiling. So this means this now will represent your what? Your minimum point, the lowest point of your graph. And uh, that's where we want moving apart. So let's write, this is how we're going to use this information then to calculate the amount to really write our want. So since I know that this TP people is our minimum, so this means our graph now, it's existing from here, from this turning point, negative one and your what? And your four, and then moving up. So from the Y perspective, from your Y, because one range, it deals with the range Y, people. From your Y, meaning your lowest point of the graph on the Y intercept, people. On the what? On the Y intercept. It's going to be here. And remember, people, I'm, I'm not, I've, uh, uh, I have not yet the, drawn the graph, so please don't. This is just a hypothetical situation trying to help you understand what I'm trying to do here, people. So meaning... Our y here, okay, just to give you a sense, people. So remember, the graph maybe might be like this because remember here we have your four, and then here now we have your one. So you, can you see that your graph, people, here? Your graph starts here, people, on the four. Then starting on four, moving apart, and it will continue up to what? Up to positive infinity. So we'll start on on the value of four on the y-axis and moving upward to the positive infinity. So this means now, this is how you're going to write your what? Your 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 your, your range now. Since we know which okay, my lowest point of a function is four. So meaning start on four, moving upward to where people to a positive infinity. So this is how you're going to write this thing. Going to write it this thing that y is an element of what? Of real numbers, but your y must be greater or equal to what? To four, because it's equal to four and it must be greater. It starts from exactly four and moving upwards to the positive infinity. So this is how you're going to write your what? Your domain, I mean, sorry, your range. So we done people, uh, finding our range but remember we were helped by our what our turning point people right? so i hope people like you really understood on how we are really go apart so the last part of the question people is that we have found the domain and then we'll find the range so the last part is for us to what to what to draw the function so to draw this function right? so let's do that so remember we have our what we have our turning point, so definitely we good about that. So let us try and draw this function now. This will represent your what people our y axis and then this will represent our what? Our x axis. So remember now we have our turning point. Our turning point is what? As negative one. As negative one and then uh and and then four again and then we have uh, four again and then you can see that we have your y intercept as one as five there people as five you have y intercept what as five here as five so that's where the graph will intersect above our, our y axis and if you can really try and solve this question i mean this equation and really try to find the intercept you'll find that the the answer that you're going to get people it says undefined math error because they are non-existent people it does not cut uh, the it does not intercept 
the word does not intercept uh, the x axis so this means it will start here and just start here and move higher so this is it will start here and move higher exactly so the turning point is here no? and then it will intersect here at five and then it will move higher people so this is how we are going to draw this graph i hope people you can follow and then we're done we have answered all three questions where we find the domain the range and the we have drawn the graph so number two people the second function is this one Uh, the function is f of x is 1 over what? It's 1 over root of x minus 1 or plus 1 or oh, my, oh, minus 2, minus 2. It's minus 2. it's minus two okay so we're doing this one so now another thing people that you really need to have to 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 really pay attention to this kind of graphs that okay you can see that the way they are structured people uh, from grade 12 you can be reminded of a what of hyperbolic function people in this form can you see that so this one is also have that element in it people right? so it, there is plus zero here, people. Yeah, well, because we remember when this is zero, it there will be no need to really put zero here. Can you see that? Right? So that's the other thing that you must remember about this function, right, people. So let's go on now and find the domain of this function. The domain of this function, people. Remember, the domain of this function, people, it can be uh, it can be anything, meaning our x can be anything. X is an element of real numbers, but but here this fun, the, 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 this expression that is under a root sign and it's a denominator, it must be greater than zero. Please be careful. Don't say or oh, equals to zero. Because when saying it's equal to, you are making this denominator a zero and the whole of this thing will be undefined. Hence, I am removing this or equal sign. Are you with me? So this means when you solve this, when you solve this, your x must be greater than 2. So this means now your domain will be written in this way now. x is an element of real numbers such that your x has to be greater than 2. In order for this uh, this equation to make sense, I hope we good people. I hope we good people. Are you winning there, people? Are you winning there? So this means uh, our function, people. There'll be there'll be a two here, people. Meaning our function will only exist exist from um, just after two, moving to this direction. And the x exists. So it won't exist here. Are you with me? So let's move on, people. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on with our range. Let's move on with our range, people. Okay? Now remember, people, now this thing, people, it has an asymptote. And that asymptote is what, people, is represented as y is equal to zero because there is a what people here there is a, a zero there so this function is is of is an hyperbolic function is a rational function of a hyperbolic nature so people it's very important to really focus and understand these things i hope people uh, uh, things are tying up as we move on so and we know that obviously people you can really see you can really see people that if you 
if you decide if you decide to make uh, to make what to make y is equal to zero if you decide to make y is equal to zero can you see all of this thing it will be it will be unsolvable because let me just write it in, in, and show you if you decide to make y equal to zero you will have something like this people you will have something like this and you can see with uh -huh, this thing is unsolvable people because when you go on and cross multiply you can see with nothing you can't solve this because this would be zero meaning it's going to be zero is equal to one and this thing doesn't make sense people it's mathematically senseless are you with me so please people be focused so in this case people we know that uh, that our 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 why people it cannot our why people cannot be equal to zero are you with me so this means now remember our y cannot be equal to zero our y cannot be equal to zero. So remember now, people. And also, our y cannot be equal to zero. So we have two things, remember. We have two restrictions now coming out. Uh, the first restriction, the first restriction was our domain. Our domain was say it can only be x must be greater than two. And then now, this is our domain. And another thing people remember, this is a rational function but of hyper, uh, hyperbolic nature. So this means this, this value of A, people, this is positive one, it tells us that, oh, our function will only will exist in two quadrants, people. In two quadrants, it will exist where people. It will exist on our first and our what people on our third quadrant. But we know that it must ex only be greater than two. So this means it's, it, it's going to only exist on our first quadrant only. I hope I'm making sense, people. I hope I'm making sense. So, and also this zero, people, it's a what? It's an asymptote. This means it's not only equal, not equal to zero, but y is greater than zero. So this means my function now. Uh, I can be able to write now my domain now fully. I'm on my range fully now. So my range will be like this, people. My range, my range will be y is an element of real numbers such that y must be greater than zero. That's my range. Because it must be greater than in order it, for this to make sense. It must be greater than. Are you with me, guys? So this means now we are limited, meaning now we are limited on where to draw our function, meaning our graph will only exist in the first quadrant where it must be greater than. X must be greater than 2 and Y must be greater than 0. So this means now my Y, Y is equal to 0 will now be my what? My asymptote. So this means when I want to draw this function now, this is how I'm going to draw it, people. X and my Y. Remember, they say that my X must be greater than zero. Mama must, X must be greater than two, people, sorry. X must be greater than what? than two. And what did they say? They say also y must be greater than what? Than zero. So it will exist here. So my function will be something like this now. I hope people this function represent y is equal to one over 
I hope people, this makes sense. And this makes sense. So we have answered the domain part. The domain part is this one. The domain part is this one. And the range. And then our function will be like will be this one. Please people, if you don't understand certain things, just start refresh the video and repeat until this concept they start they they are engraved in your mind. Let's move forward, people, because we don't want to make this video too long. Let's move forward. And then uh, the other one, people, the other function that you, you are, we are given here, people, it's this function. We are given this function. Y is equal to the root of x. Yeah, the root of x, this one. Yeah. So, this means now, people, oh, y is equal to uh, 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 x. A root of x, oh, something must pop in, people, remember. This represent what, people? This represent an inverse of what, people? This represent an inverse of what? Of y is equal to x squared. This is the function. If this one is a function, and then this is an inverse. And you know this function, you can draw it like this. So this means the inverse will be rotated along this line. Therefore, it will be like this. Okay? So please, people, do... So to get more of this information as going deeper, people, who have a, we are providing tutorials, especially for students who are based in UFS. Uh, but we do also other having... Uh, we do also provide other... Uh, for other students who are also based in other institutions. So we do provide via Zoom sessions on, via online. So please do contact us, people. Eh? Please do contact us to learn more about this. So moving on, the first question asks us to find our what? Our domain. So remember, people, I'm, ask, I'm, I'm starting with domain and range so that at least you have a perspective because there are other questions whereby you won't be asked to draw a graph. You'll just be asked to find domain and range. So that's why I'm doing that. Right? So remember now, my, my domain, my domain is just this, whole of this thing that is under a root, it must be greater than zero or equal to zero to, in order for this function to make sense. So this means x is an element of real numbers, but my x must be greater than what? Or equals to zero. Then this represents your what, people? Then represent, this represents your what? Your, 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 your domain. X is an element of real numbers such that X needs to be greater or equal to zero in order for this function to make sense, people. Are you with me? So let's move on, people. We're finding our range. Our range. And then our range now, people, remember, uh, what do we talk of? We're talking on where the graph exists along the what? Along the y-axis, people. This is how we're going to do it, people. This is how we're going to do it. Remember. Remember. Uh, your function, people, of this nature, it's like this. It's like this. The function of this nature is like this, people. Your graph is like this, people. But there is something that is very important, people, is that that graph people you're going to draw, it must be a function. So it has to be restricted at some point. So this thing, people, it must be left out. It must only uh, exist here, starting from zero. 
we must be careful, especially of restriction, because remember, people, we want the domain of the function, the domain of the function, the domain of the function, the range of the function. So it must be function, it must satisfy. So, but if it has like this, this is not a domain, because when you, when you throw a vertical line test, you can see what it penetrates or intersect this, the graph in two points, so hence this will, won't be a function. So there needs to be some restriction that needs to take place here. So this means now uh, your domain will be like this. Y is an element of real numbers such that Y must be greater or equal to zero. Because the, the graph needs to be a domain before. I mean, pardon, it needs to be a function. It needs to be a function. Are you with me? And then uh, drawing this function, people, you can use a table form or, or anything, people, any way uh, or any method that's preferable to you, people. So, this is your y, this is your x. If you make maybe negative 1, Zero, uh, one and two, and maybe four. If you, uh, oh, I'm making a mistake here. Here it must be like this, people. Two and four, because these are my inputs. Remember, so if I put this one remember it won't work but if I put zero then it will be zero if I put one here I'll get one if I put two here people I'll, I'll have root two and remember it's going to be plus or minus but you're going to restrict it hence that negative sign I'm not going to really entertain them so it's going to be positive when I put Four here, and I'm going to have your what? Your two, but only positive. I know which there is going to be plus or minus, but since we want to make it a function, we're going to ignore the negative part. So we're go only going to take the positive part. So the function, when you want to do, you want to draw it, it's going to be like this. It's coming from here now, and then just here, people. So the function will be like this your y and your x. So this will represent your what? Your function. Are you with me, guys? So you take these points and point and draw them, people, and the point and then can you see that? So I just want to make this video, people, know not to be too long, but I can, uh, that's why I'm running too fast. And, uh, but I hope you get that idea, people. Right? So let's quickly go to the last function, people. Our last function is this one, is this type of a function. So this function, people, is of this nature. F is equal to x over x minus 1. Let me go and confirm. Oh, plus one in this case is plus one. It's plus one. So if you really see people, okay, you may ask yourself, what type of this function is this? All of these things. It's also a rational function, but it, uh, it's in hyperbole. In, it's in in a in in a hyperbolic nature, and you need to simplify it further, people, to really see. Any. So if you Go on and apply your, your what, people? If you go on and apply your long division, you find out that this function now, people, uh, it will be written in this format. And it's easier because you have this information, especially from your grade 12, people, and it that this is what? Your hyperbola. Hyperbola function. Can you see that? So if you apply long division, you'll see it, people that this function can be written in this in this uh, uh, form because it's easier to 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 really analyze when you have simplified it and written in this format. It's very easy. It's very easy, people. Huh? 
So let me just focus on this one, people, and on this in this form. So remember now we are asked to find our people, our domain. The only restriction in our domain is that these people, the domain, it must not be equal to zero. That's the only restriction, people, that you must have. So this means that our function can be x an element of real numbers. It can take any value, negative or positive, but this uh, 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 expression that is below people, it must not be equal to what? To zero. Because if it's going to be zero, all of this will be zero, and then it will be undefined. So this means my x is equal to negative one. So when you write it, people, fully, you're going to write it like this. You're going to say your domain, x an element of real numbers, it can be anything, positive or negative, but it must not be specifically, what people, it must not be specifically zero. I'm a, no, 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 not zero, it must not be negative one. It must not be negative one. So this is how you're going to write your what? Your domain. So people, to make sense of these things, please do watch the, la the, the last two previous videos because I, I bet people want to watch those videos. Nothing will ever go away in your way, people. Nothing. I'm telling you when it comes to finding your domain and range, especially plus this one. Nothing will stand in front of you people, especially when it comes to questions that have to do with this and uh, these type of questions. And uh, this this is a basic because once you know how to find the domain and and, and and the range of the function, meaning you can be able to analyze the function. If you are able to analyze the function, then you are able to draw the function. And if you are draw you're able to draw the function, I'm telling you people like you will see. You will see, especially as you progress with your calculus, that this is one of the most important thing you can ever, uh, uh, like, uh, you'll be very happy to understand it because you will see its application continuous in different uh, chapters. So let's move on, people. We find our domain, and then now let's go to our, let's go to find our range, people. Like with me, okay? And then our range, people, is that people, okay? Our range, since people is can be written in this format, meaning our range people is only res it's in restriction is this because remember what is this cons? This represent your what people? This will represent your what your horizontal asymptote. Meaning at some point it will be the one that will restrict our function along y axis. Are you with me? So this means now our function will be like this people. Uh, it's 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 range it's going to be like this uh, y is an element of real numbers but y must never be equal to what people be one because at this point if you make this one people be equal to you make the 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 y be equal to one you can't solve that equation you can't it'll be undefined it won't make any mathematical sense. So that's why I'm saying that y can be anything but y must not be equal to 1. So this now represents your what? This represents your what? Your range. Represent your range. So let's move on now in drawing our function. Are you with me, people? So uh, let me quickly go through that. And people, let me just quickly go through that. And so, uh, so this means we're drawing our function. I'm going to write it in a simplified uh, way. So you can simplify it by doing a long division, people, a long division, a long division. So this means you're going to say, um, if you don't know, you can, you're going to say x uh, plus one and then going to divide it by x and then just go on people with your long division sign s goes how many times here is going to want all of these things and then you'll f you'll find something like this at the end people will find something like this at the end with me so this is our function now let me quickly draw it people for you remember our asymptote our asymptote our x asymptote you take this and equate it to what to zero 
So my x, this will represent your my asymptote. Are you with me? This will represent my what, people? It will represent my asymptote. Are you with me? And then my y asymptote, my y into asymptote will be positive one. So these are my what, people? These are my what? Asymptote. So let's quickly just remember this is y, then this is x. And then my asymptote. My asymptote. Okay, my asymptote, and then the y asymptote will be one that we find here. And they call, they're going to call that asymptote a positive one. It's here. And then another asymptote is going to be negative one here. with me so this means our function will be drawn like will be drawn like this since it's a negative people this means it does what people it will only exist where people it will only exist here and here now with me since it's negative it's going to exist here and here on the second and fourth quadrant so this means this is how we're going to write it I'm going to draw it, man. And then the other one will cut on zero, people. I mean, it will cut on zero because when, when you make this thing zero, all of this will be zero. So it will cut on at point of origin zero there. So this is our function, people. So I hope, people, this video really help you out. Make sure, people, to uh, to learn more from us, you know, we are going to leave our details on the description below and make sure people to watch our videos just to get the background you know on how to really uh, you can master calculus people and accounting you know? so from me prof mangana i'm signing out let there be light